presentation. Going to be some stuff from the Monsters NHL affiliate in Columbus. ClevelandMonsters.com for all the details. Four tickets for you, Monsters Americans, on Valentine's Day. Good luck, Hard 10. 216 578 or 800 348 Did you miss us? Because we missed you. Well, not Jerry from Willoughby, but the rest of you. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 W. Uh, they are on the road uh, this spring. They're going to do the Agora on May 10th uh, with a fantastic band called Deaf Heaven in the supporting slot there. I love Death Heaven. I said uh, that maybe I would go and then leave, and Bill suggested, because it's one of his favorite bands, that I stay and watch Coheed. Yeah. And maybe I'll do that, because I have never seen them live. They're very good. I mean, I saw them when they were called Rush, but um, so much. <laughs> but I hear that they're great live. Uh, Coheed is just one of those bands that's not on my radar. They're not for but, everybody. But Death Heaven is awesome. So um, maybe I'll go to that. Jeff Ross, comedian Jeff Ross, the Roast Master General. Is doing MGM Northfield Park in April. I have those tickets for you later. And if you want to go see Nickelback, um, 50 million Elvis fans can't be wrong. And Nickelback is going on the road with Brantley Gilbert and Josh Ross. They've got some country acts opening for them. And they're going to do August 9th. Would have been my parents' anniversary at uh, Blossom. And you know how big of a Nickelback fan my mom is. You think she'll come out? I don't think she's ever heard of them, but... Um, yeah, I think she should come hang out. Go I to fo- Nickelback. I found myself... Um, I sent my, this past Saturday, in addition to being the anniversary of the Challenger explosion, a lot of people talk about that, uh, uh, the great actor Alan Alda turned 87. He always reminded me of my dad very much. He was trending on Saturday, and whenever someone of that age... Is trending. I gotta click to see what's going on. You think they're dead? You think they may have? But it was just a away. flyer for his stand-up show. Yeah, but it was just exactly. <laughs> and it was just, uh, yeah, he, his birthday. So I was happy about that. The great Alan Alda was eighty-seven. And again, when I was a kid, he looked like my dad and kind of reminded me. My dad was a big fan of Mash, the TV show, so I would watch Mash. And you know, anyway, but Saturday w- would have been my dad's birthday. He passed away last June, and so. In anticipation of that and knowing that my mom was going to go out to the cemetery on Saturday, I arranged to have some flowers delivered on Friday for his birthday. Well, there were two things at play here. A, didn't realize how Chicago was getting hammered with snow. And B, the flowers never got there. So I'm texting with my mom. Did the flowers come? Told her they were coming. She goes, well, it didn't come, but I was gone for a little bit and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, there's nothing on the slip that says that someone has to be there. And so she goes, okay, well, maybe they'll try again tomorrow. I hit these people up. I go, hey, what's going on? Oh, we tried. Nobody was there. I said, just leave them. There's going to be somebody there. These are time sensitive. Leave them. Okay. We'll give you, we'll, we'll notify you when they're delivered. Nothing. So I get on there this morning and I'm doing like the, um, I don't want to call. I don't want to sit on hold. And most times they don't want to talk to you either. So you can just go on their website and chat with a robot for a mm-hmm. while and get the whole thing figured out. And so I do that. I'm like, hey, delivery never happened. I want my money back. I want a refund. And they're talking to you. Oh, okay. You know, but then they send you over to a person. Because I would imagine the robot isn't, um, it's not in their wheelhouse to give you refunds. So they got to send it over to a person who can then proceed to try to talk you out of it. And so that's what it was. Well, what you're left doing is having to decide if you're going to type in all caps. And I'm not an all caps typer, but I was getting increasingly frustrated. But if you're trying to make a certain point. Trying to make a point. You might have to go all caps. So now I'm talking to a person, not a fake person. I can tell that this is a person. Talking to a person. And she goes, well. They- How do you know it's a person? Are they using slang? They're saying, oh, oh, that's a. Uh- cap that the <laughs> the flowers weren't delivered. No cap, homie, is what, yeah. All of the, you know, they were like, you sound like you've got a lot of riz. <laughs> so, um... These flowers are bussing. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, I just want a refund, please. Please initiate a refund. Take a, uh, the, the flowers can get there. She goes, well, how about if we have them delivered 
as early tomorrow. I go, I don't need them now. These were, I was going to say these were for a funeral. They weren't. They were going to a cemetery, but the card that I had filled out was for my dad's birthday. I just wish my dad a happy birthday. But obviously these were flowers my mom was going to be taking to the cemetery. So I didn't want them to go, well, the order says it's a birthday. Now you're saying it's a funeral. I just said, it were time sensitive. Give me a refund. They didn't get there. I said, I don't need them now. Well, what if we deliver them at no extra cost to you? I'm like, why would there be an extra cost to me for you delivering the flowers I ordered last week? Just please initiate. How about if we give you 50% or first she goes, we'll give you a $20 credit on your next order. I said, there won't be a next order. See, now I'm playing hardball, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm playing hardball. Because I've ordered from them before, and I probably will again. I go, there won't be. Can't tell them that, though. No, of course. I said, there won't be any future purchases. Please initiate the refund. So then she comes back. How much were they? And they're given like a hundred and some dollars. Whoa. So I'm I'm giving you, so she's given you all of the customer service speak Mm -hmm. along the lines of like, we're so sorry that this happened to you and you didn't deserve it. I'm like, you're not my therapist, all right? You're just somebody trying to get me to... So I'm going back and forth. So then I dip my toe in and I type one word in all caps. I said, REFUND in all caps. Right? Yep. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. She's just towing the company line. So she said, now she's up in the ante, right? how about a 50% refund and a $20 credit on your next purchase? And I said, perhaps you didn't hear me. No, she can't hear me because it's all text. Text chat. I said, perhaps you don't understand. There will be no further purchases. And I said, then I get snarky, right? Because again, it's not her fault, but I just want to wrap this up. I want to wrap it up. So I text her again. I said, counter, how about a 100% refund? And then she wrote back this long thing. I will, I'll process the refund and I'll still give you the $20 credit. And then I type in all caps, thank you, to show her that not only can I, can I put my foot down in all caps, but I can also be nice in all caps. And I think that's what a lot of people miss. People associate all caps with aggression. You can also kill them with kindness with the all caps, you know? So, yeah. I but think that could also refund like, in all thank caps. Thank you. Well, like, either yeah, way, yeah. either way. I always love, I always emphasize with an emoji at the end. No, that that's juvenile. I know. You lack <laughs> credibility when you start talking to somebody. When What emoji am I going to write or that I'm pissed that my dad, my mom didn't get the flowers, you supposed to that. go to my dad's you grave. Could, you could say, Angry face? <laughs> well, I mean, the you the could green do, ready to puke face? You could do the thank you in all caps and then turn the up, uh, send the upside down smiley face. It's just like, oh my gosh, you're awful to deal with. What like, am I, like, 16? No, just give me the refund. And she did. I got electronic mail confirmation. A hundred dollars for flowers. hundred plus. Hey, man, flower, plus. delivering flowers out of state? Yeah. That's not cheap. I didn't even know. Every that. time I send flowers to someone in my family, I'll send for my mom's birthday, I'll send to my parents for their anniversary. It ain't cheap, homie. I mean, the, if I were to go, you know, because when you order flowers anywhere, you can go ground level mid-level penthouse, right? They go, oh, we'll put some more blooms in there, whatever. Even if you go base level, you're talking 50 bucks, and then there's delivery, and then there's blah, blah, blah. And I'm sending these out of state. I'm not sending them up the street. So, yeah, it's $100 plus dollars every time I send flowers to somebody in my family. You should g- get an option if someone sends you flowers. Like, do you want the flowers or do you want the money? <laughs> <laughs> or the money. Yeah, they, uh, we can give you some flowers, but, like, what if we give you half the amount of flowers that we were going to give you, and you also get like fifty bucks? Well, that would be great. But here's the thing, too. I'm so stupid that it's only within the last couple of years that I realized send the flowers not in a vase, because then you end up. My family ends up with like a field full of vases that they don't use because just send the flowers in a box. Because a lot of times by default they'll have a they'll vase. ship them in a vase right a vase. nobody needs all <laughs> no, you that said vase. It's vase. i did say vase but i like to go back and forth Since when do you my vase deferens was tested this morning mm-hmm. what
Since when do you have to be there for a delivery to happen? That's what I said. I've never heard of that before. Well, when you, you fill out the it. order, when you There's fill out the order, porch pirates, you know, porch pirates. But but when you fill out the order slip, it will ask you, does someone need to be there and sign? And I always mark no because my mom comes and goes. I don't know where she's going to be. No, put him there on the front step. I have a hunch where she is. Bill, just not running errands. <laughs> That's not where you were going to say. <laughs> that is not. You don't know that. You said you, you knew where she was out running errands. Mm-hmm. Who's Aaron? <laughs> you tell me. You son of a bitch. That son of a all bitch. Caps. <laughs> all cap. No cap. All caps. There's... So yeah, it was um, that. That was my morning. It was going back and forth first with a robot, the artificial intelligence, and then with a real woman who finally came around to see where I was coming from. But I was really. Dancing between the all caps and the lower case. A business that has good customer service will end up keeping me around way longer, even if its product isn't as good. So I, I signed up for Threadbeast a few months ago, and both times they sent me boxes, the first boxes that they've sent me have like been not particularly my, my style. I, I posted the This is like when they, when they curate yeah. some clothes for you and send you the... Yeah. Yeah. So they sent me this denim jacket. I was like, this is not my style. I don't want it. But, like, their customer bedazzled. service is so good. I mean, it was not far away from being bedazzled. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, it wasn't even that it was bad. It just isn't something that I should wear. Right. And so I was like, hey. And so then they get, like, they get on the phone with you, and they're like, okay, we're going to, you know, go through what your styles are. what, And, and they try and make it as curated to you as possible. And and. Because the customer service experience has been so good, I keep my subscription. Where if this, if the uh, customer service wasn't good, I'd be like, ah, I'm done with this thing. But because of that customer service aspect, I'm like, I'm gonna stick with them because they, you know, it, it's they're not getting it right on the first try, but they do keep trying to get it right. If this woman had done even one or two more volleys with me trying to avoid the refund, I would have gotten increasingly pissed. But she pulled the cord at the right time. She didn't kick me upstairs to somebody else. She took care of it. And I was like, that's fine. That's all I wanted. I will probably order from you again because I have in the past. That's the first problem I've ever had with them. So I will probably do it again. But if she had gone back and forth, I would have been like, come on, man. Let me give you some money here. It's a thousand dollars. I'll get you some bouquets in somebody's front yard. Go fund yourself. Good luck. The buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score one thousand dollars. Enter the nationwide keyword green at wmms.com. That's green. Enter it now at wmms.com. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. Alan, uh, Flower National Chains did not make their own bouquets. They pimp out the local place. Where, yes, I know they don't send flowers across the country. Yes, they contract out to whatever the local florists are. We should do is just call the local florist. Well, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I guess. It doesn't occur to me to do that. Hey, Mrs. Mariano, can you send my mom some flowers? It's for my... It's then you don't for get that my dad's. Either. No, I know, because the the, whatever, it's convenience, right? I can go click, 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 click. There you go. You off. Go one one phone call. Hey, uh, here's where I want you to send flowers. Here's my credit card. Okay, thank you. Bye. It's all so easy. Maybe your mom's new man thought it was from a competing gentleman caller. You, oh, son, dare of, you. son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. My mom. Oh, my dare you. you. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God, my mom is not dating anyone. She was just well, telling. Well, they don't call it dating. She was. <laughs> God damn, you dick. <laughs> no, my mom was telling me about a friend of hers who lost her husband three years ago, and she's back to dating now. And met a guy, and my mom's like, I would love that, but I just want your dad. And I'm like, yeah, it's, you know, I'm so happy for her. She, her husband died at 51, three years ago. She met a guy online, really nice. I'm so happy for her. I would love that, but I want it with your dad. And so my mom goes, characteristically um, dramatic, my mom goes, so I guess I'm doomed to be alone. 
Oh, jeez. That's my mom. Love my yeah. mom. She's very, well, I guess that's, honey, that's, um, it, I'm just going to die alone. Okay, mom. Well, we're, everybody's well, around you. Statistically, even if he, she found another guy, she'd probably still outlive him. So... Even like she's, she's still 74. Alone. Like, right. I, I nothing saying you can't do that. You think that she's part in life? Guy? What's that? You think she's gonna go after like a 65 well, she year old? Got guy? to, right? Yeah. Are you gonna date an 80 year old? Like, maybe no, well, whatever. You get someone that's uh, quite presidential. <laughs> 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 if you're dating yeah. a guy that's uh, like in his 80s and he's got a little bit of the dementia, do you get mad if dementia. he calls <laughs> No, we're. Making it a little more hip. It's just the the mencha. The mencha. He's got the mencha. Mm. You know, just a little bit. And he calls you by the wrong name. Are you allowed to get upset? Mm, what name does he call me? Is it a cool name like Skip or Champ or Sport? Yeah. He's no. He's calling you. Uh, he he keeps calling you Al- Marty Alvin. Alvin. Alvin Crocs. Well, I've been called worse. <laughs> yeah. Hello, this is your father speaking from the Alexa. Mm. You could just for a hundred and hundred plus dollars, you could buy your mom an Alexa and program your dad's voice into it. Yeah, I could, I could do that, but I, uh, I won't do that. I shan't be doing that. It'd be nice for. Her. Speaking of old people, this is a story I love, and the the story itself is from two thousand ten, just for some context. But we do talk about like when the oldest person in the world dies. This was 2010. This was a decade ago. But um, the oldest man in Tokyo, they found out, had been dead for 30 years. And his family was just collecting his pension checks. So the officials go to the guy's house to congratulate him on his 111th birthday. And they discovered his mummy in his bed. They said that he had probably been dead for 30 years. That's wild. They go to the house... To congratulate the guy. And, yeah, but that still means, you know, he died when he was 81. Yeah, do they got to pay him back, though? they got to pay back that? I don't know about that. Again, this is a 10-year-old story, but yeah. the granddaughter didn't want to let these people in because they said he wasn't, he didn't want to see anybody. And they were like, well, why not? I mean, so the people were kind of um, suspicious, and they got the cops on it, and they found the guy's mummified body wearing the pajamas, lying in bed. And the family said that he, 30 years ago, walked into his bedroom, didn't want to be bothered, and became a living Buddha. Yeah, but they got about um, 109,000 American in pension payments after his wife had died. So they go to him and go, hey, congratulations. Uh, what was his name? Sago Kato. Um, on being the, the oldest man in Japan at 111 years old, and uh, his mummy is in bed. Haven't been dead for 30 years. How long until it stops stinking? How long until you don't smell that anymore? I'm a couple years. I'm going to say it's going to, yeah, it's going to take three, two, three years. You keep him in the pajamas. Maybe. Well, if they mummified him right away, though. Like, so they're probably. I don't think he was like embalmed. No, no, no. They didn't do anything. He was just desiccated. Like all of the, yeah, they let him go. And um, c- nature go- took care of itself. Because I, you hear about people like who clean up crime scenes or something like that, or, or they just see people that are dead. Their corpse and all the fluid stuff leaks through any surface. Like it leaks through the mattresses, it leaks through the cushions, and it goes through the floor. And then that's how these people find out. You know, their upstairs neighbor died because it, they're all the juices. Yeah, yeah. so they had to. They had to have done something. Well, yeah, Otherwise maybe they put some. Um, maybe they put a series of pans mm-hmm. under his bed to catch oh. all the. Exsanguination all and the, the dripping, all the, all the grave wax. Honestly, though, that is amazing how the human body, like the the, I don't know if it's acid or whatever fluid we have inside of us, goes through any pretty much anything. Well, it it's not like it's eating through it. It's just there's a lot of uh, when when you break down, it's made to that fluid is made to break down skin and it. Breaks through other things too, right? Well, what, wait, are you I'm like de- decomposition? Yeah, you know, we're in decomposing. So, like, if you have wood floors, it's going to go through anything like that. It's not going to like eat through metal and stuff like that. Yeah, we're not alien. We don't have acid for blood. I mean, there's stages of human decomposition, but they have to go through those, and it's going to be you're going to go through that 
way quicker than 30 years. Yeah. I mean, the bulk of that time he was in that bed, it was just a skeleton, right? Mm-hmm. Like you bloat right after her. And then you, putrefaction, when you start to kind of break down the cells and the skin and the whole thing. I'd say the worst of it would be like a, a year. No, I, no, I think it, the, the worst is going to be that. pretty quickly. Yeah, pretty quick. When it, like those first probably like week or two is probably real, real stinky. Yeah, we've talked about this before. One, uh, after a couple of weeks, I mean, once your organs stop working and the body's cold, if you just let it go... I mean, obviously it was outside, you'd be subject to the elements. But even inside, a couple weeks later, your teeth and the hair, the nails fall out. After about a month and a half, you start to liquefy, the whole thing. So maybe they put pans under the bed. <laughs> they didn't get that specific in the story. I wish they had, but. People in other countries are just so, like, they're just okay with that. There's people that doing would, that here. So that would traumatize me. I Because it's in. all in service of stealing his social security checks after he died. People do that here all the time. Oh, he found his mother-in-law grown into the lazy boy because he was collecting her disability checks. Not other countries. Do I, that here. But I'm saying I would be traumatized by, like, seeing a family member just, you have to walk past that every day or, like, you decorate it. Like, How much know, money do you need from the government? Yeah, to be like, I'm not traumatized anymore. A lot. A lot, a lot. Like, I don't think it's as much as you think. I, I would say six figures a year. Hmm. Well, least. you heard him, government. That's what pound cake needs. I got to take a break. If you want to text for something, 35199.